vertigo and dizziness when you lie down. This is going to be a deep dive into explaining a little bit about what's actually going on and how it is that your neck can be one of the contributing factors. So let's get into this, explain what is happening. All right, the first thing that I want you to understand, and I need you to be able to think in terms of fluid changes inside of the brain because there's going to be a change of pressure inside of the brain and inside of your balance organ when you are in an upright versus a lying down position. One of the major factors is what's known as the vestibular organ. Okay, here we have a picture of the vestibular organ. So it's a, a little organ on the inside of your inner ear, kind of shaped a little bit like a squib. And as it relates to head position, you have these little loopity things that are part of this organ and they make a, a series of loops. So there's one that's going to be oriented in this plane. It detects movements such as going up and down like this. You've got one that is like that. So side to side kind of detecting movements like that. Then you got another one on the back that's oriented like this. It's good for side to side position movements like that. Now, one of the problems that people can have is if the fluid inside of this particular organ is not circulating properly. If that is the case, the little nerve receptors on the inside can be detecting these abnormal bits of movement. And as a consequence, if you put your head into certain positions, it's going to make everything feel like the world is spinning. And when it comes to balance disorders, they come in all kinds of different flavors. There can be overt vertigo, which is where the whole world feels like it's spinning around you. There can be dizziness, disequilibrium, where it feels like your world is swaying like this. And some people, it's better when they are lying down. Other people, it's worse than they're lying down. Other people, it seems to go away when they're in a moving vehicle. Other times, it feels much worse when you're in a moving vehicle point there is it can show up a lot of different ways and there's a lot of different mechanisms that are believed to be involved. The truth is, is we don't know 100% about why these physiological disruptions are going on and why they show up differently in different people. Nevertheless, because your balance system is so delicate and because it receives so much input from various sources, your eyes, the inner ear itself, joint receptors in your neck, joint receptors in your jaw, your ankles. These things are always at play to make sure that we can maintain our balance and equilibrium. Therefore, if any one of these is thrown off, it's possible that we can start experiencing symptoms. Now, let's get back to this idea then about, okay, well, what's going on and why is it that a person could feel worse when they are lying down? One of the believed mechanisms is what's called a otolith malposition. What are these? These are little crystals that are inside of the fluid sacs like that. And if they get stuck, they're not quite moving right, they can be a mechanical source of irritation. And the hallmark, if this is the case, is that when a person is leaning their head back like this, if you look at the eyes, the eyes start to flicker side to side like this. It's what's known as an astagmus. And this is the hallmark of a condition that is known as BPPV, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. And there is an amazing procedure that's got, you know, only about a 75 to 98% success rate in helping people with this. This is what's known as an Epley's maneuver. This is something that a physical therapist, a chiropractor, anybody who's trained in this procedure, really, there's plenty of videos on YouTube that can help you out with this. So if, hypothetically, you get vertigo whenever you are turning your head to the left like this, and if you've got that nystagmus effect, somebody's looked in your eyes and they see that they're going like this, the procedure in a nutshell is done by turning your head, leading it back to the left like this, lying down on your back, keeping your head in that position for about 30 seconds, turning your head, you're still on your back, over to the other side, staying there for about 30 seconds, turn your body, all the way over onto that side. So you're just lying on your side and then slowly sitting back up. So each stage is be about 30 seconds. And again, it's got a 75 to 98% success rate. However, this is specific for that BPPV condition. A lot of people who experience vertigo and dizziness when they lie down, they don't actually have that nystagmus effect. As a consequence, this procedure may not be exactly going to be the solution to what's going on for them. And so instead, we may have to look at other possibilities. And what I'm raising here is that it's possible that an issue in the neck is actually what's contributing to the vertigo and to the dizzy symptoms. 
Now, you might be wondering, well, how exactly does that happen? Okay, well, let's go back to our little diagram here. What we don't have shown for you in this particular picture is a duct that's located right about through this area here. It's what's known as the cochlear aqueduct. This is the conduit that's supplying fluid into your inner ear and also the cochlea, the part of the ear that's responsible for hearing. And it is going to communicate with the circulation and the fluid that's around your brain. It's what's known as cerebrospinal fluid. And I talk about this in a lot of other videos, that fluid dynamics within the brain, both going up to the head, draining back down and also circulating within. They are profoundly influenced by the normal motions about what is going on in the joints of the neck. Why is that? We have a series of ligaments or tendons in the upper part of the neck that's normally designed to keep the space around your upper spinal cord open so that every time we're moving our head, it's not going to be squeezing or compressing anything like that. The kicker is, is if we've ever had some kind of a physical injury where those joints are no longer moving the way that they are supposed to, those exact same ligaments can start to exert tension on that delicate tissue. As that happens, what we believe is that that is actually causing a disruption at both a micro, but then also a macro level in terms of how the fluid is actually able to circulate. Now, why certain things would show up on one side versus another, again, upright, lying down, being in a car, not being in a car, again, we don't fully know that. But again, the vestibular system is extremely sensitive. Therefore, any tiny disruption can show up lots and lots and lots of different ways. My point ultimately here is because there's a change of the fluid pressure inside of the head, when we are moving at different angles and because those different semicircular canals inside of that vestibular organ may be challenged in certain ways when we are in a lying down position or because when we are moving we're rotating our shoulders well guess what that does that's moving joints in the neck and if those joints are not moving right that micro disruption can be affecting the circulation at the micro macro level and if that is so happens to be affecting circulation to or from and creating an abnormal pressure gradient at that vestibular organ that might very well be the trigger that's causing a person to feel vertigo spinny dizzy when they're moving their head in different positions or moving your body in different positions when you are lying down now what does that mean in a nutshell what it means is that when a person's experiencing vertigo dizziness into that lying down position, one of the first and easiest things that you can do is have somebody check to see if you have that eye flicker effect. If so, the Epling maneuver may be one of the best, the simplest, easy ways that you can resolve that underlying issue. And again, you can work with a, a physical therapist, you can work with a chiropractor on this. It's not a you know aggressive manual procedure at all. And again, it's got an amazing success rate. The kicker is, is if you don't actually have that flicker effect going on in your eyes, it means that something else is going on here. Yes, it is very important that you would have the proper testing. So whether that be an MRI, whether that would be circulation studies to make sure you're not dealing with overt pathology inside of the brain. But after that, it's important to not forget that your neck could be one of the major contributing factors because of its influence on how it affects circulation inside of the brain and one more time because the balance system is so sensitive that is oftentimes one of the first things that's going to be affected so what do you do about this first and foremost is go to ucc near me see if you've got a local specialist who deals with this upper neck kind of area and especially if you've got other symptoms headaches migraine dizzy vertigo chronic fatigue shoulder pain, hand pain, neck pain, things like that, odds are there's something going on there worth looking at. This is a different form of healthcare. It doesn't involve any drugs, surgery, and there is no stretching and there is no twisting of the neck either. If you want some more information about how this type of care works, you can visit my clinic website at clearchirospokane.com or you can also check out any number of the other videos that we've got on YouTube, on TikTok that go into a bit more deeper dive about what this particular care is and the kinds of people that we're able to help. Thanks for watching. This is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna at Clear Cairo Spokane. Get well, live well, stay well.